Good evening, everypony, and welcome to Commentary's Magic Stream on today, Sunday, April 24, 2022. I am, as always, Grand Paws. Big Cheese. Firecat, and... Ivory Starlight. Back from a con. Almost recovered. I'm back from the farm. Yeah. There back. was a small amount of farm. Back from the farm. Uh I don't know why anyone would bring farm to a convention. It's just not a good idea. Don't ever do it. AJ liar face. I was completely unaware that the broader San Francisco area had significant agricultural. I don't. Yeah, we d we decided we needed to use those empty office buildings for something useful, so we just made farms out of them. I mean, Central California is the produce capital of the world, and that's only like three hours south, so we really just shipped everything up from there. That's fair enough. Anyway, yes, unless you've been uh, living under a rock, you are probably aware that BabsCon transpired recently. And it started on the right day. And, and it happened. ended up and, and it ended, ended up and it ended on the right day. And it didn't burn down. Of course, that may be minimal perspective being inside of the CCG room the entire time, but, you know, the CCG room didn't burn down, so... Uh, I mean, I was gonna say that shouldn't happen, but there was that one time at Everfree. I was gonna say, if we're going off of track record for major events at cons in the last few years, we're like one for two right now. <laughs> Fair, okay. But yes, we had uh, a great turnout, which was good to see a lot of players, uh, including those who traveled uh, internationally, and were able to participate in numerous events. Of course, a big thank you once again to Pages for allowing us the use of his well-constructed cube. And not to and forget our commentators, Animoy and Eminently Sensible. Without whom our stream would have been far less engaging, so thank you very much. And to everyone who tuned in and watched as well. We obviously greatly appreciate that. And now, we get to talk about it all, all over again, because some of us were right in the middle of those events and didn't get to see what was going on, and others were judging and got to see everything, but had to shut up about it. I saw the inside of the vendor hall, it was great. I did too. I never went to Artist Alley. I'm kind of sad about that. Cute ponies. I'm sure there were. We had two primary constructed events. Uh, the first being a core tournament, and the second being the first, to the best of our knowledge, organized, in-person, physical, adventure tournament. I'd like a few more qualifiers on this, please. Go ahead. No, I said I'd like them, not that I have some. Oh. Well, if you think of any, you can just throw them in interspersed throughout the discussion of the deck lists. You're going to hate me for giving me that permission. <laughs> no, I think it'll be entertaining. It'll be fine. Every now and then... It's like our, random our... words. Yeah, exactly. It'll just be a random word that comes in out of In the middle of something, it's just like, non nonstick pants! You're like, wait. Sure. I don't think nonstick pants qualifies as descriptors, but sure, whatever. So, uh, do we want to start with Core as we take a look at the top eight lists from that event before we go to Adventure? Yes. Sure. Uh, let's go eighth to first. Sure. Make, makes sense. Okay. Uh, let's see. So, Core. In eighth position, we have Sokol, I think. Yes. This Does looks... it involve a bird and Tempest Shadow Troublemaker? Well, yep. if it involves bird, it better involve Tempest Shadow Troublemaker, because who doesn't like six effectively free points? I like six free points. I mean, six AT for six points. Still a pretty good exchange, right? To the best of our nine, knowledge, but... it, it's nine, because you got to play the card. But, hey, it's something that's really difficult for your opponent dis to disrupt, so. That being said, 
I don't believe that Sokol has actually changed this list in the last several years. There's no print. This is a defender's block entirely. Isn't it? Yeah. I I think you're right. Yep, there is definitely only defenders, uh, defenders block stuff. No LL forward. So with that being said, I guess these are the cards that back when Core rotated before Leaders and Legends had actually released, or as it was about to release, this is what Soko thought was the most important to hold on to, and he has clearly done so. It's still put in placement, so... Can't really fault it. Yeah, two and two. It's winning as much as it's losing, so. Despite uh, missing about three sets, yeah. All right, fair enough. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, Pony of, the Pony of Shadows are interesting, but I guess you're hoping to hit a Daybreaker or a Loyal Sea Pony or something big off of it, so. Yeah, or get a Plush Dash and tow like three things over there and then beat the other troublemaker in. I mean, none, of, none of these targets are are terrible. Like no. I wouldn't if your objective is the troublemaker at the other problem. That's a fair point. And I mean, when you're thinking of defender's block, there's only one other epic that's available and that's the Storm King, and you're not gonna run that in blue. So Especially not with this stuff, no you. No sticks. Sticks. Okay. No sticks for you. Okay. Next list. Next list. Uh, let's see where is it. Here we go. I heard you like yellow. Uh, is Smithers, I believe, at seventh. We had quite the match. It was a good old-fashioned shin kicking contest. I don't know. This deck looks a little bit too lazy. I don't think this is really, you know, in the mood to like get up off the couch and do any shin kicking. It There's... is running the the characters required. There are some couch potato vibes coming here. But there's also a lot of blue. And we've got Shushine, the destroyer. Of course. Who did in fact destroy in one game? And the other shoeshine. I I feel like he's running that just for the flavor text. That seems like some, like, international bad mannering there. Meta commentary? Possibly. I like it. Wait, what's the other shoeshine? It's the a new shoeshine. one. Run for Upon it. Fond memories. The Agile. When oh, there she is. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The face is not quite so Destroyer of Worlds, but that's okay. Oh, yeah, because one is movie art and the other isn't. Yes. That's why I was confused. I'm so used to seeing Shoe Shine from the movie that you yes. forgot what she looks like in the actual show. I don't remember her from the show. Because <laughs> she's just a background character. I mean, she was a background character in the movie, too. The problem is, when you're the destroyer of worlds, it doesn't matter so much, because you turn into a foreground pony. Shoeshine spinoff when? Um, probably before AJ gets one, but, you know. What's her line saying, ooh, or ah? Uh. Probably something like that. Also, we'll keep the uh, the low low-budget 3D animation from the new series. No. Hey, don't don't knock it till you see it. Uh, I've, let's see. I, I've seen it. Let's see. It's there on the internet. Eh. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's see. Other than this, it's blue and yellow. We've got all the fun <laughs> blue yeah, stuff blue. and all the yellow stuff. Someone said blue and yellow. Oh. Uh, and the blue did a lot of work here, getting that little extra bit of disruption through stop fighting uh, one Smithers R game, and obviously gives some nice uh, efficiency boost through CC and Flitter and Swinging Wonders and both Shoe Shines. 
and stuck together for anti-combo stuff. Yeah. Or anti-control, I suppose, as well. Eh, to be fair, this does have enough cheap stuff that you can... I think you can successfully chain that. Seems fine. Yeah. Plus, uh, you gotta run final question, right? Well, d yeah, of course. Let's see, I'm... If you're not running final question in a deck that has a bunch of blue friends in it, I, you're going to need to justify that one. Fair. Yeah. No. Well, looks good. Next one. Okay. Uh, let's see. Next up, we've got Max in... Sixth. Same main, different take. See, I'm on board with this because I see a Novo, I see a Defend the Hive, and I see a Terrified Scream. I'm angry. Why are you angry? I'm angry about Novo. <laughs> uh, this is core, right? Yeah, I, I sent Novo back to hand like... So many times in our game. It's like you really don't want to see that card. And it's like this card that kind of turns one of the core aspects of the game on its head is disruptive or something. It is kind of like that. Particularly when you're a farm deck. Or an aggro deck making big friends. It's like, oh, I'll challenge your epic with my two power friend. I am significantly ahead of you. Just Hope like, I don't flip really low. Oh no. Hey, this can flip a 7. It can flip a 7. That's true. What's the average? Average is actually Not three. even, yeah, like 3, 4, probably 3. I've, I've seen lower. <laughs> yeah, the event's all kind of boosted up a bit. There's still some, some couch potato vibes going on here. A few interesting inclusions as well with these multicolor splashes for Celestia and Luna and Shelly and Sheldon. And then just a lot of reduced problem wrecks. Like there's, it, it's a different take on the couch potato. Also, did I say go home dot deck, not go home, couch potato. Yeah. I'm a little confused by the vapor trail. It pulls Nova into a face off. Oh, because she has to be in no uh -huh. oh, she has to be involving involved. this card. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you get to pull something in from home there. Yeah, okay. That would be Nova would be by far the best anti farm card if her existence just made the face offs look at lower power. Yeah. Re reprint when. No? I think we broke no. No, it's Novo. Also, look at the look at those confront wrecks. Tiny. Yeah. It's Real got, small. It's got the DLA in there, though. You gotta run DLA. Yeah, of course. This is pretty spicy. This did well. That requires you to run shovel prism light. Next list. I run shovel occasionally. Can I get this out of order here? Uh, that depends. What are you showing next? See, that can't be right. Just a moment. Holding. Yeah, it's the same deck twice in a row, so I think there's a problem. <laughs> That's... There we go. A problem. Okay, there we go. I have corrected this. Alright, we've got Instagram in fifth place. Hey, look, more Fluttershy. More, more blue and yellow. Yeah, but this is the this is the dilemma, Fluttershy, in case all of the dilemmas didn't make it obvious. <laughs> it's got a lot more multicolor in it, too. And there's some, there's some cards in here we haven't seen a whole lot of. Sky Stinger. Sky Stinger, we got... Fun Memories of Vapor Trail, we got Fluttershy in bulk. True Shine. The Destroyer. Of course. As usual. And Wonderbolt's Runway. That's a Run card we have not seen 
Do you mean Pegasus eggs? I was gonna say. I was gonna Pegasus say eggs. It's titled Wonder Bolt's Runway. It's titled Pegasus eggs. Well, let's not <laughs> confuse people who don't know that. I mean, the. Anyway. Go hatch some bird horses. Blue. Blue and yellow. Blue and yellow, the Vapor Trail did obviously a lot of work here with Stunning Wonder, running as many dilemmas as Mr. Grimm was. The cheering sections are interesting. Uh, there's nothing here that I see that cares about you winning by a set amount of power. Just that you win. Just that you win. It was probably just a additional, like, find against something that flips higher, swing the face off. I guess since you have so many Pegasi in this list, it's probably worth running just because that's 2 AT that will basically guarantee you a face-off win. Probably, yeah. Especially if you put it on your main. Yeah, that would basically allow Stunning Wonder to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any opposing troublemaker. It wouldn't matter what it would be. And there's a fair number of two bonus problems here as well, so you want to you go for those points when you can. Yeah, this looks like a... I'm a little surprised that there's no plush dash in here. But this, yeah. is, this is a deck that wants to get up there, win those face-offs. Doesn't want to sit it around at home. Yep. The opposite of the couch potato lists. Yeah. This will be interesting to see if this shows up again. Seems I'm like sure we'll a... see it in... Well, it's it's a little bit of a throwback to um I think Everfree last year where this kind of deck showed up a bunch and then Fluttershy got smacked. She flew too high. She did. Yeah, who knows? We'll have to see. Next one. All right. Uh, let's see. That's that's a bug. I don't like that bug. This Ooh. is Kevin in fourth place. Buggo. So is this essentially aggro we've seen for the past every single deck? Yes. Basically, yeah. It's a lot of aggro. Yeah. Yeah, eight, eight through fourth so far have all been aggro. And eight through fourth have also all either included yellow or blue in their list. Well, we got some purple going on here. Yep. This is kind of a refined version of what Kevin was running at Everfree last year. Not built the night before, I think. No, it was built the hour before. <laughs> he, oh, he built this the hour before? I don't remember. It was this one or adventure, I think he built late. It was pretty close. I still find it interesting that this list is not including uh, Sunburst after we talked about that from Continentals last year, or uh, Pegasus Royal Guard, which had been removed entirely. I don't know. It might not he be might not have enough. had them with him. Or, That's or that. I mean, uh, Pegasus Royal Guard seems not terrible here. And the Sunburst goes in nicely in place of Starlight. Well, but how easy is it to play that? The Sunburst? Exactly as easy as it is with Starlight, except it gives you the same amount of power and other added utility. Because yeah. it boosts your main by one power. Yeah. Mm. Maybe. Okay. Kieran Tails, though. Kieran Tails and Terrified Scream. Interesting. Yeah. We'll have to we'll have to see if Kevin is able to share his thoughts on the Babscon post on Reddit. 
and explain some of his career choices. Oh, okay, there we go. I was missing the fire. Were you looking for entry? I was sitting here going, this is a little light on entry. And that's like, ah, there it is. Yeah. But yes, hissing of 10 because it's got the traitor as the main. Next. All right, let's see. Third place. Cheese, this is you. Yeah, so this is a deck. It has cards. <laughs> Did you change all right, anything? That's all that's all y'all get. Yep. You know what this deck isn't? Aggro. Except for it kinda of, sorta of can aggro. But but it kinda of prefers to farm. And control. Yeah. Did you uh, and... change anything from the what we're playing? From what we did last time? Or yeah. oh, sorry, during like the um uh whatever they're called recorded games? No, the run up. The, the run up. Yeah, the week before the stream, the what we're thinking. Oh yeah. Did I actually? You did. I did. Oh yeah, yeah. I added another spooky ruins and I took out something random. I don't even remember what. It was a uh, Shelly and Sheldon, wasn't it? Yeah. Because I don't like Shelly and Sheldon. I kind of want to get rid of all of them. Um, the Spooky Ruins is good because it's... Yeah, so Spooky Ruins is super good. Like, against another Luna, it's, like, kind of critical. And against just a bunch of decks, it's really useful. Helps you defend, helps you farm. Kind of does everything the deck wants to do. Also, Dineral Amulet is actually really good. I've been saying this, but no one believes me. I believe you. My card is insanely annoying. Yeah, like, so you, like, the always the, the aggro math problem uh, for your opponent that it kind of introduces. But, like, plus one power or more, and you can stack it. Having two of these on your main is fun. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. We can't face off here anymore. My main is only four power with staff on your turn. Mm. That's rude. Well, what a shame you put all your two power friends here for the face off. Oh, wait a second. I'm probably going to flip a six, and uh, you have zero power. Aww. Shame. Yeah, in terms of downsides, I think I lost... What was my record again? It was like... 3-1. 3-1? Yeah. Doggo. I forget what, who I lost against. Was it against uh, Bugle or somebody? I don't I think, think it was it actually have Bugle. Act I think it might have actually been Instagram? Yeah, I, I think th it was against he... Instagram. Yeah, because I think you got Vapor Trailed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Eh. Vapor tail, vapor trail will do it to you. But I mean, I I like playing this deck. I think like I don't think it's optimized yet. Um, I think there's changes you can do. Medicals, but, and but it's fun playstyle things. All right, that's fair enough. Well, we'll have to see how this develops. If you don't like Shelly and Sheldon, you could just run Chaos Magic Blast. Biting pineapples. Yeah. Uh, right. next one? Next one. All right. Ivory. This is you. Eh. All right, let's see. We got Bird. We got Tempest. That's all you get. We got... Next deck. Pink. Yes, because it turns out Wrath of Guild is a good card. Kind of is. I mean, Gallus and Silver Shreve is also a good card. Yes, they are. And there's Gro that's why they became three ofs. And there's Grogar's Lair in here, which... See, that's just rude. Does that that's work? That's also a good card. <laughs> you you sit there and drop a Grogar's Lair, and your opponent lets something get scared, and then you're like, Aha! I mean, yep. It, it works. That's, that's just highly rude. Rutherford gets some value, too. Yeah, Rutherford is Rutherford is definitely 
given blue car blue cards blue farm some extra oomph Prison Blight asks, how does Lair work on Fearless Friends? They can elect not to pay the tax, and nothing will happen. Unless your opponent is also uh, in control of the Shadow Bolts. Okay, so basically the assessment here is... I like all these good cards. What happens if I put all these good cards in a deck? Boy, it's almost like that's how farms started way back in Premiere. Hmm. How about that? Well, this is definitely a farm list because it's running the uh, legions. Oh no, 100% farm. I mean, the aggro game here is possible, but definitely not ideal. I don't know, you've got a pretty good chunk of the metagame clock covered here. You can aggro well enough, you can combo a little bit even with the Tempest. Most of the yellow decks we've seen have a tendency to go wide, as yellow does, so the Wrath of Gilda is going to be really nice, and obviously deals with uh, Kool-Aid Yak, although they're probably siding out Kool-Aid Yak, because I'd like you to point to any one of the friends present in this deck, except for Jorno, that you would like to bounce back to hand. I mean, Rutherford going back to hand means that you have to pay four to get it back into a face-off yeah. instead of one. I guess that's yeah. true. The only difference is you have a hasty speed instead of having to pay the one ahead of time. Yeah. Still not still not great, and I... But yeah, like, I would probably... Sorry. I would probably side out um, Kool-Aid Yak against this deck if I knew, like, the full deck list. Yeah. You could leave it in. It's just not real good. So, yeah. Swift two power, not the worst thing ever, but also not the best. No, not sure. There's much better things you can run. Maybe, maybe. I've yet to see one who can outsmart Yak. That's right. And We're final here. question, because got to get them points. Yeah. Uh, let's see. One last. Deck. What could possibly beat Blue Pink Farm? More Blue Pink, pink Farm? Blue <laughs> Pinker Farm? Blue Pink kind of farm, but also closer to control. So, no points for guessing who's running this one. It's Bugle. And I love Dallas Pink. This just looks like a ball of obnoxious to play against. Is this somehow news and or surprising to you? No. Yeah, I don't think that this list has seen any revisions since the addition of three inside informations, and it's basically performed at close to optimal levels since then. Focused attention is a good card. Beagle does run a full play set of those. Um, and then, you know, burbs. Yeah, pretty much. All right, hold on. What doesn't have wings in here? Yeah, this deck actually, despite the fact that it's built as a control list, it if it comes online, like it bursts to fifteen I, points like very fast. I, yeah, I would not call this like a lock a slow control deck. <laughs> this is kind of a fast control deck. Yeah. Well, it's running move fast colors, and it gets more speed, ironically, out of hitting you with bits of control. Well, the additional point you can get in every face-off with the Gallus main, it can actually... I mean, it outran my farm list. Yeah. yeah you've, got that, you've got that funky window in a face-off after a winner-loser has been determined and the consequences of that have come into play where you can then be like, I'm going to do this other thing too. There's always hitting people with a stick. Yeah. One AT to maybe scare something and get a point. Well, I guess you have to pay to play the card, but either way. 
Yeah. There yeah. are there are indeed both blindfolds and Grogars here. Uh, if you have your own Grogar, you're probably not going to play the blindfold first. And if your opponent does have Grogar, then you're going to play blindfold and your opponent will be sad. But yeah, this thing is very strong. And for a control deck, I mean, it is evident that this is a control deck over a farm deck just due to the fact that it is running a significantly smaller number of troublemakers and thus probably plans on leaving those troublemakers in play for a longer period of time before you defeat yeah. one or two of them and then go for the burst. Turn. I mean, there's only five that it can even hit. Yeah. But it's def this is definitely kind of deck that's going to, like, at the end of the game, beat up the troublemakers. But Oh, yeah. I think I am here. maybe a little surprised that this is only running two legions. It's kind of been the traditional control package. If you go back and look at Cheese's deck, it's also only running two legions. Really? Yep. Oh, the... The Yuna. Not in, like, hardcore lock control. Maybe. I still think the Legion is really, really huge if you're going to try to farm or control. Yes, it is unique, but it's still a really good card. Yeah, as Beagle points out, if you're not trying to farm it, it is a liability to draw multiple copies, and you effectively have five copies of Legion in your deck because you have the Grogars as well. Eh. Eh. Sure. But it's also basically the best troublemaker that exists in a lot of formats. All of them? Maybe? Uh, we'll have to see. Maybe. I'm my money's on it being the best in all formats. Yeah, I think that's... Uh, no bet. No bet. Okay, so that was core. A lot of blue. A lot of yellow. Some pink. A little purple. Blue. Yellow. Small amount of white. So, uh... This is a GP. Did you actually do it? No. You don't don't yes. want to talk about it. I don't. I don't want to talk about it. You don't want to talk about it. Okay. I don't want. I don't want to talk about it. Understandable. So, at this point, we ran a bunch of limited events. Limited's always fun. I limited got, was fun. We got team sealed. Teams of two. Lots of ties. Except for, what was it, me and Cheese? Yeah, we did okay. Actually won most of ours. Yeah. I won all of my games, but then I think we had one tie in our Yeah, the last one was, a, was a tie, because that was just, that was rough. It's meme sealed. How, how is that collection of uh, sets working for meme sealed? Which sets words was it? So it's it was... uh, AD, Marks, and Sequestria. I mean, AD is always kind of eh. <laughs> uh, Except when like... it's not. Like, AD gets you... There's some uh, interesting cards. But... There are. Like, it occasionally gets you an absolute ringer out of nowhere. And then Marks but is... Marks and Sequestria is fun. Eventually, I'll convince you guys to stop being cowards and run Canterlot Knights Crystal Games AD. No, I, I just like Sequestria because I get to run Go Home in Sequestria. <laughs> it has three of the Go, actually, or like four or five of the Go Home cards. It has a lot. Well, that's what you built this time, right? Yes. <laughs> so, like, like I've built and limited for a while. Godot says they learned how absurd Stunning Wonder actually is after having not played for like a year and a half because of draft. Yeah, Stunning Wonder's a good card. It was better when it functioned any number of times per turn. Well, it was too good. She that too was, high. Oh, that was great. It was like, I don't like my hand. I'm just going to start playing Dilemmas effectively for free and yeah. draw more cards. Yeah. And then Fluttershy flew too high. Yes. 
We also saw we had draft. That was um, Friends Forever High Magic. Yep. That was interesting because that's got it's not quite as good as I think Sequestria High Magic could be for entry, but man, that that messes with you having to see the um, the banish entry cycle out of High Magic. It's just like oh 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 right yes. That was fun. So draw two after every DFO. I think you mean draw one, right? Yeah, because it only works on your problem. And only works once per turn. But yes, HM does have a lot of entry, which is why it's nice to pair with some other sets. Yeah. Okay. Time for the big show? Uh, time for the big show. All right. Adventure. And it, wa and it was a big show. It was, oh yes, the old wording. Well, the old wording was still only your problems, but it would function any number of times per turn, so you'd still only get one ET after a DFO. Growing Confidence is the name of the card. Stunning Confidence? Yes. Growing Wonder. Yes. Uh, Adventure was a big show. It was bigger in terms of attendance than Continentals was, but there may have been a plague going on at Continentals. So. Yeah, been a plague and late announcement and some other things going on there, but inability Show for international to free attendance. This year. Yes, anyway, come to Everfree. And spoilers. And maybe play one of these decks in the adventure event. Spoilers. Uh, what we got? Let's see. Uh, so we did do a cut here, so we'll go through the top eight again. Uh, let's see. What is this? Top eight with seed eight. And this is Sonnet. Okay. This is definitely a Sonnet list. Yep. Tender taps, bodyguards, belly flop, more removal. Bleh. I don't like it. I like it. I, I like respect it. Don't I, re I respect it. I respect, respect it. it. can respect it. This is understandable. I wouldn't want to see it on the other side of the table from me. There was definitely a lot of a lot of thonking turns required when I played against this. You're just like, oh no, now what? Well, it's like, okay, this clearly has things in the list that I can't just like face roll farm through, so I have to be <laughs> careful. Okay, so hold on, let's wait, wait. I actually have to think about what I'm doing. All right, hold on. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's too many immediates. I don't like how many immediates this deck has. This makes playing hard. Like, I have to think. I don't like thinking. Hmm. Well, there's six immediates, but then you've got these chaos effects as well. Oh, God. And then you've got the pink problem that causes your chaos effects to trigger twice. Yeah. I am extraordinarily unhappy at the thought of two shots off of biting pineapples. Oh, yes. And Bugle says... We think we need crack in here as well, just to... No. Oh. Cracking. We need no, we cracking. just need crack. <laughs> Let's get the cracks. Gabby does, Gabby does not belong in here. <laughs> no, Gabby is cocaine, not crack. There's a difference. I also love the Sweetie Belle Larger Than Life that, to the best of my knowledge, is just in here to get you more bodyguard unicorn tokens. That's... I think that is that. I mean, showy one is still relevant, but yeah, you're definitely going to get bodyguard tokens off of that. Ugh. That's just rude. Yeah, that's pretty rude. I like it. I, I think yeah. I'm going to stick with your sentiment here of, I can respect this, but man, I do not want to see this on the other side of the table. Fair enough. Next one. All right. Uh, let's see. Top eight with seed four is Sketch Beam. Got us some blue farm. Uh, 
I'm sure that's the last time we'll hear those words for this event. I've got some and bad no news. No one for ran you. Blue Farm ever again. I have some bad news for you. Hey, look, it's Blue Farm. Let's see. So we got a Thunder Lane, we got Plush Dash, you got Daybreaker. Went for the six total resource hate. Three Winterzilla and the three property damage. Yeah, that's true. Plus the Rogar's Lair shield. Potentially too much? Like. Mm, maybe. I, I mean, maybe, but Winterzilla is still going to end up being a troublemaker that blocks problems. I think, yeah. we need to, I think we need to talk about Sketch actually being ahead of the meta here. Because I think Sketch made one of the best draw deck uh, inclusions based on what the meta ended up being. Wait, let and me guess, let me guess. Go ahead. No idea. <laughs> it's probably want to bet or one of those three events over there. It's a my money is on turn the tables. You are absolutely correct. Turn the tables in a farm heavy meta is completely ridiculous. Because that says that uh, you can play it during a face-off in face off. Not just end the face-off. End the face-off, and then you get to immediately challenge that opposing troublemaker, even if your opponent was the one who was challenging it to begin with. Okay, so what I'm hearing here is, your troublemaker? No. Our troublemaker. Correct. So you can sit here and rely on the fact that most farm decks are going to play a card in the face-off to guarantee a win, especially if you keep their resources clear, like with six resource removal in your main deck. You wait till they drop a plushy dash or a Rutherford or a Thunder Lane or a Barrel Through or, you know, what have you. And you're like, oh, you're up in the face-off. That's nice. No. Uh, my face-off, and thank you for the extra card flip. So what I'm hearing is that this is like a 400 IQ play here. This is a 400 IQ play. And it is a shame that it did not end up getting higher because I fully expect that if the meta sticks anywhere near where it is right now, Turn the Tables is going to be one of the most impactful cards you'll see. All right, so my 500 IQ play is to run White Farm and cancel that when it comes down. Ooh. Animoy okay. asks, can, can you challenge an opposing troublemaker with turn the tables with no characters at that problem? Yes. Your odds are not good. But you're flipping an extra card. But yes. Because it says, just says all characters. If all characters just happens to be no characters, that is still technically all characters. Yep. Yep. And if you can, oh, I don't know, Thunder Lane? Seems rude. So, this is, this is big brain play right here. And then the rest of it is what you would expect to end up seeing in Blue Farm, Final Question, Surprise Takeoff, to Griffin Stone, Tarnished Rep. Not, however, seeing a Riled Up in here. That's true. Probably a little weaker against Orange. Yeah, that's the card I was thinking of, and I was like, wait, there's no riled up in here. Yeah. Next one? Yeah. Okay. Bugle says, okay, so. Here's the Earth. That's a throwback. The opponent challenges their TM and is winning, yeah. They play one a bet, and you oh you effectively cancel the one a bet by ending the face off. That's rude. That's hilarious. And then and then you know because doesn't one a bet mean the, the next, next time, time eight some... player... Oh, you're right. Oh, yeah. that's rude. Oh, it is still in effect. Oh, that's really rude. <laughs> that's incredibly rude. Speaking of being rude, this deck. <laughs> okay, so this is top eight, seed three, big cheese. Like you needed to be told that. Look, it's basically this isn't go home dot deck, but it's as close as you're gonna get. 
This has zero go home cards. It's like, it has... go ahead, stay at the problem, see if I care. It has go to the bottom of your deck. Or, yeah. And bailout, and melted expectations, and sudden closure, and I don't know. I don't like this. Apple, apple bloom. bloom. Which? Two apple blooms in play, I play a bailout, exhaust <laughs> three of your things. They don't ready on the next phase. Or ready. Whatever. Rude. But not as rude as you can get. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this deck, it gains AT and... Uh, Makes your life difficult and then mismains its way to victory. Yep. And occasionally beats up a legion for good measure. How How moist was your brain? Anti-moist. I mean, his games all went to hard, softer hard times. They so... didn't, actually. I think one of my games uh, actually got to 15 points. I think one time. of my games I actually won on points. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, because so basically you score like... Uh, well, right, it's a control You can score deck. a good nine points based on your troublemakers and then double confronting. And then the mismains, like, generally in a game, I was looking to get to six points and then just blow put, everything up. Put the wall up and. Especially go from if you, there. like, I got pretty lucky at getting legions out early. So, like, there, I think with the game that ended pretty quickly, it was like, I got a legion out turn one, and then there were like 11 counters on it or something. Managed to defend it for a while. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah, and then it's just like, okay, I guess I'll beat up both troublemakers. Like, it's like, lol, I have a Applejack at the problem. Okay, I'll beat up Grogar. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. AJ just raises her eyebrow and, like, mountains evaporate. Essentially. Uh, Sirens is really nice. Like, it's just a five power troublemaker with one bonus. How could you run it? Oh, wait, it stays up when you play School Shutdown. That's like literally only the only relevant part of that. <laughs> All right, fair enough. And some Aramospies. I haven't seen those in a while. Yeah, Starlight Glimmer's fun. I, there was one game where I had to sudden closure my own Starlight. Because uh, I think it was up against one of the farm, the blue <laughs> farm, and they had like like eight blue friends. And I'm like, mm. Yeah, let's not. Let's not have those hit the field. That seems bad. Yeah, fair. Yeah. That's a that's a good um, unexpected use for that, though. I like it. Yeah, you just do it at the start of your troublemaker phase. So you actually get to flip up your next troublemaker. Yeah, okay. Not too bad. But yeah, fun deck. I don't know how fun it is for the opponent. But, Let's you know. say fun for the pilot, maybe. Well, it's a control deck, of course. That's how that works. Something about a zero-sum game. Something about a zero-sum game. Okay, next list. Let's see. Top 8, seed 2. Uh, Ivory, I think this is you? I believe this is me. We had a small correction here, uh, so the results post has been updated. Yeah, the because yeah, I definitely, I definitely was not gonna go into an event with cheese playing control without jerk faces. <laughs> <laughs> that's some pretty targeted bad mannering. Yes, because that's the that's my only way of dealing with that. Well, not my only way, but my most reliable way. But Anyway, yeah, this is, as Pancake put it, face roll blue farm. There's nothing really surprising here. You play the troublemakers, you punch them, you get points. You repeat, the feathers would if be proud. If your opponent plays tricks, you just play things that give you more power and continue punching. There's there's literally no surprises here. 
I mean, the surprise is which immediate event or card you're going to play during the face-off. Sure. Your surprise here I think here the is... only one, the only one here that we haven't seen in the other list is GG, which I was initially skeptical of, but after some some practice games, I'm like, no, GG's staying in here at a three of. She this is... card does work. I'm sorry, which card? GG. 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 No. She's, no. Bad. GG. <laughs> she is uh, a little bit of a house. A little tiny birdhouse. She does do a bit of work. I think the only other thing going on. Oh, are you? You're being spicy here. You've got what? Two pieces of resource removal. Yeah, mm. only two. Mm. All right. What resources is this going to care about? Shield. Cool. That's unique. Yeah, got to get rid of it though. It's annoying. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's why they're. That's why they're, yeah, play my own shield, or, I mean, staff shield. Well, yes, but that's some garbage. Like, you want to have only your shield. You don't want to play even. Ew. Sounds yeah, terrible. Yeah, so I play, I play my own shield, and then I play one of my two Winterzillas. Right. And also, I have Grogars. I have five Winterzillas. You can find up to five, yes. That's fair. Next one. Okay. Uh, let's see. Now we're into top four. Uh, let's see. Seed five. I think this is me. Yeah. Is it Luno plus Troublemakers? If that's a yes, then that is definitely you. I don't think I was the only person running this kind of thing, but yeah. Y you were. You were was definitely you the were. only one yes. running this. Well, Luna this... Farm? Yes. This was this was supposed to be a meme. Yeah, well, sometimes memes are more than dreams. Well, okay, so I think my comment here was I just kind of started catamarying my way through the tournament, and it worked, I guess. I need a, no. I need an animation of Luna just rolling up all of these cards with the Katamari Damacy theme playing. I mean, I think we were singing that in the elevator at one point. We were, yes. It's 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 a multi multi purpose deck. It can farm, and it can aggro. It can do both. Yeah. So it goes fast somehow. Hopefully. Somehow you're running Bluna with Thunder Lane, Loyal Pony, Swinging Wonders. Like we know how this goes fast. We do know how this goes fast. And it also has this lovely suite of troublemakers to cause more problems. Also, I think we're at a perfect score for blue decks running Final Question. Probably. I mean, if you're running anything that can take advantage of that, which all blue decks hopefully can. Like, you probably should. It's kind of like yellow. If you're running yellow, you should probably be running DLA. Or at least seriously considering it. Yeah. I think the only thing I didn't like in here is the Grandpa Gruff, but... Yeah. It helps, it helps you flip turn one if you have to. Yeah, I think I did use that once. Anyway. Legion of Doom. Triad of Terror. Doing work? You really, really, really want to see one of those. You really don't want to see your opponent land one of those. Because those are problematic. They're strong. They are indeed very strong. Thunder Lane is also a house. But we knew that. Would you adjust the quantities on any of these? Between, like, Thunderlane, Rutherford, GG? GG. 
I hate how that meme started because Cheese legitimately thought that was how it was pronounced. You get to bad manner your opponent by pronouncing it correctly. Just be like, all right, no response, GG. Wow. Terrible. I don't know. I'm... I'm kind of tempted to get rid of the big Rutherford. Like, yes, I had that and played it a couple of times, but I don't think I was ever really in a position that I wanted to use the ability on it. Hmm. Partially because I maybe my hand was just full of troublemakers or it was just the wrong point in the game to care about that. Could be. So, yeah. GG up to three seems good. Probably find something else to do with the extra one of. Anyway. Yeah. So I got to Katamari Damasi my way through, and I think I did manage to get Smithers to incorrectly sideboard against it, which was funny. I think you did that in game one. Yes. He did. And I think you said the thing, the forbidden, I, the I, forbidden thing. I said the line. And, and somehow did I did work. I did not die instantly. You did not die instantly. In fact, you did not die instantly so hard that you now have to play in the Invitational this year. I have Tia points, yes. I don't think I'm going to get that far with them because I can't participate in the next major events. But I have Tia points. Cursed, I think there should be consideration for head judges getting T a point qualification. Okay. Uh, let's see. Top four. Seed. I think seven? we're at. I have those backwards. Uh, yeah, that's seed seven. All right. Smithers. Some more Baluna. But this is Baluna aggro. Imagine having to rely on your friends for points. And this is mono blue. Well, the classification is... system is going to call it mono blue because it doesn't have enough of a white identity to call it blue it white. Is, it is mono blue. Well, I mean, it's mono blue. Considering. But is it blue yellow? No. Because the classification system doesn't have enough. This deck needs riled up. <laughs> Two red buttons made for GP with L and Tarnished Reputation. I like it. It's a good one. You need to make that. Yeah, I think I need to make that. That's, that's a good one. I mean, as far as I'm aware... This is definitely Smithers all reliable at this point. Well, it certainly seems pretty reliable to me. Yeah. He's been yeah. running variations of Mono Bluna in events that are Adventure or Harmony for a while. It is probably yeah. worth pointing out that this deck, this one deck right here, is probably single handedly responsible for the adventure format even existing. As Smithers had always been its biggest proponent, and the pressure exerted upon other individuals in this community led to it actually being codified. And this was the deck that it was always pointed to as an example of why core plus or, you know, pre rotation core should be continued to be supported. And you know what? It was fun. Presumably. I wouldn't know. I sat there and watched people farm troublemakers for five hours. <laughs> I mean, I had fun farming troublemakers for five hours. Until I didn't draw any, and then I had to try out aggroing a Bluna deck. I'll give you one guess how that turned out. Poorly. Uh, I think I got to 11 points. That's respectable. That's pretty respectable. But yeah, because eventually I drew troublemakers. Yeah. yeah, little difference on the problem here. Smithers has a tendency to favor Nightmare Knight over to Griffinstone, but that makes sense. 
Luna's going to be moving more efficiently anyway, and to Griffin Stones more for when you need to move a more expensive main up to keep farming. So yeah, I am maybe a little surprised he's not running um, moving out, but I suppose the wrecks on that are a little bit more annoying. Three and three, yeah. I guess you'd have to sit there and say, what are you going to drop? You're not going to drop Final Question. You're not going to drop Tarnished. Uh, maybe the Mysteries. At only two sticks, I think that there would have to be some draw deck adjustments that he might not enjoy because well, there was the cheap two sticks tend to not be. There's the two sticks, but there's also the stop fightings. And it's worth remembering that moving out's ability basically makes your frightened cards a uh, free move. Right. And I mean, you could go a little bit more ham on this even by swapping in uh, Terex Rain. Oh, it seems like there might be an alternate thing there. The Smithers yeah. may have already tried that and decided it's less good. He he took the he took the screw it, I'm going fast, and going fast means no distractions approach. Fair enough. Rutherford too, as Bugle points out. And you got some loyal sea ponies there, just for additional shots off of either loyal pony or plush dash. So seems good. Or fierce loyalty. That's fair. Yep. Okay. And Bugle points out one piece of hard removal. Yep. Conditional hard removal. Just in case. All right. Because why not? All right. Semi-finalist. Top two. A player that has been out of the scene for a while, but came back with a uh, bit of a storm. This came is back swinging. Goto with seed six. Um, I see the response team. That's definitely going to break through Troublemaker walls. Yeah, this has... Yeah. I think this is sitting there and going, I like your go fast, no distractions. I think you're not going fast enough, and I think you still have too many distractions. Well, it worked. Sure did. Except there's there's one particular card in here. You sound angry. Lyra. Lyra is fine. It's a vanilla two two one. Look how many friends are here. <laughs> there is there is it's definitely a, gonna be text in there most of the time. Two, two. Just because you guys have bad RNG doesn't mean that everyone else does. Thirty-three out of fifty cards pre-sideboard are friends. You are statistically likely to hit a friend with Lyra. So basically cheese will never hit it. Got it. Especially since there's no way you're siding out any of these friends except me. Actually, do you ever side out Spitfire? Probably side yeah. out Spitfire. If you know okay. you're not up Asi against the Farb neck, yeah, I think yeah. so. Aside from Spitfire, I don't think you side out any of these. Mm, property damage isn't useful against some decks, but... I mean, I'd rather side out the two trash if I don't expect to see a lot of trouble make a lot of resources because property damage is still a friend yeah it's true beat the rush for even more immediate speed movement want to bet because hey why not get more points and buckball because hey why not get more points and night glider because hey why not get more points and day yeah. I, wanna, I don't know want to bet feels like Like, you think you're actually going to win the Troublemaker face-offs against Troublemaker-focused decks? Oh, I mean, no, 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 it no, no, also no. works on problem face-offs, which I didn't even realize. Oh, it does. I have, never, okay, never I have literally never used that in a problem face-off. I'm like, oh yeah, that does have that little or problem face-off there. Got the two dilemmas. Got enough cheap stuff that you can really take advantage of stuck together. Seems good. Yep. Seems good. And what? with a with a with a top two finish, I think that's uh, pretty well supported. But as usual, we have to qualify this. So who remembers? What was it about 2017? Guess what? 
It's your girl, AJ. She's back in pog form. She's back in pog form. Poggers form. I have gone to the first card on the draw deck, and I already am disgusted. I don't know Big why. Like, That's the best card, though. You you add plus one power counters to AJ. It's all you need. Yep. No. It's dumb. Not as dumb as the Apple Bloom thing. Well, okay. Yeah, this, this thing is pretty dumb. This gets so much more annoying. So you've got AJ herself. You've got Under the Weather. You've got Apple Bloom. Those are the got... only two cards that matter are AJ and Under the Weather. Well, no. You've also got Apple Bloom and Bailout and Melted Expectations. And Big Mac. And. And Legion. Is that Backdraft? No. It's, yes. Uh, Fume, Fume no, was it's, the. It's Backdraft. No, no, that's Backdraft. Right. Fume was the one that is really bad. Fume, Fume is the one that you have to build an entire deck around. Backdraft is the one that just exhausts. Yeah. And then you've got uh, Honest Pony as well. I Basically, you best be packing some Riled Ups. Because your stuff is going to be tired. It's going to be tired. Yeah, Adventure is a format where you better have answers to exhaust because Orange is going to be running nonsense like this. Now let's see what name this is. Oh, uh, you can do better than that, Bugle! Four out of ten. I mean, I think it's fine. We're going to name it after the post-con event, Tired Pony. Hard Day's Work. Isn't there a card with that as the subtitle? Probably. Oh, yeah, that's the that's the Ultra Rare from AD, isn't it? No, that's Lasso Champion. Yeah, whatever. Hard Day's Work. So, like, all of the, the names that you give this are already cards. Just call it, just call it Flop Sweat. No, you can't do that. Flop Sweat is the pink deck that just always threatens to have Belly Flop. I don't know. It is an exhausting day on the farm for AJ. Except it's not actually exhausting for AJ. AJ is, like, totally fine about this. I, sure, I'll mention the power play thing. Originally, when this deck was being designed, uh, Bugle and I had some conversations on this, and it was more heavily forward on uh, AJ just beating up troublemakers, and that was going to be your win condition, was the fact that AJ got bigger from your opponent's stuff being exhausted. And I thought that maybe that wasn't enough in terms of immediate tricks uh, to help you, because uh, I didn't feel like you'd be able to keep that many opposing friends exhausted for that long without spending all your resources, and that one or two power was not going to make up for your opponent having something to mess with you. So I said, eh, maybe consider running power play. It's a nice chaos flip, and it's another immediate flip, and you already have the backdrafts in here, so it can actually be two immediate flips. That card did so much work across so many games. Power play may be expensive, but it is nice to have. Because also, who's going to remove a backdraft that's in play already? Who's going to care about that card? The answer is probably more people because now the dragon trade is relevant. The surprise factor is always taken into consideration. I think the other MVP in this deck is Legion of Doom. It is disturbingly hard to take one of those things out when it's backed up with this much shenanigans. Yeah. 
And if you're a farm deck, you really do not want to see one of those come down from this deck, because you are going to have a very hard time getting through it. Very, very hard time. It Jeez. stays there too long, yeah. What? <laughs> Look, he's so angry, he already knows what I'm going to ask him. Do you want to talk about it? About what? You want to talk about your favorite card in this whole deck? The starting problem? Yes. Yeah, it's terrible. No, it's fine. All right, Anything so... that means that you can't get your AT is fine. Well, no, it's worse than that. And it even says so on the card. The order is ready, gain actions, draw. You don't have your action tokens for turn when you would ready your things. So if you didn't bank, your things aren't readying. Yep. I think we even put... Yeah, yeah we, put rem we put reminder text on that. There, yes, there is reminder text on the card specifically for this. That all being said, uh, this deck definitely relies on its six immediate exhaust effects, or, you know, 12 if you're counting an Apple Bloom being in play, as the method of slowing down opponents. And also relies on its barrel through and power play to potentially break through Troublemaker walls or, you know, flipping a Big Mac, of course. So this is a deck that may, uh, may be asking for a bit of trouble when it comes to that turn the tables card that Sketchbeam was running earlier. We'll have to see. May also be asking for trouble if someone were to run, oh, I don't know, pink white. Or pink purple. But again, that's all a meta that's all a meta that has not yet developed fully. This is the first time that we ever saw adventure. And people came out of the gates with something that they knew works in just about every format, which is I'm gonna beat up troublemakers. So if you're looking for tips towards what to do in Beating future adventure tournaments. Consider finding a way to deal with this. If all else fails, punch Tyrek in the face! And maybe yell at Cozy Glow a little bit, too. Problem is you need or, to punch Tyrek in the face like six times. Or punch Clo Cozy Glow in the face, too, because she's also on the card. No, it's Tyrek. Face punch. Yeah, that's the one thing that this isn't running. Let's get a copy of Monumental Evil in here. Monumental Evil was one of the sideboard cards that I believe got dropped for power play. Fair enough. Again, kind of a meta read. Yep. Uh, so congratulations to Bugle on their absolute tyranny of this event. Go be tired. Go be tired after these, after this game. With that said, uh, I think this is not going to be the last that we'll see of physical pony cards this year, nor will it be the largest that we'll see of physical pony cards this year. What's on the horizon? Oh, uh, let's see. Well, this isn't physical, but go sign up for Hacko. Uh, that will prob possibly launch today. How many signups do we have? We have four signups. I'm going to submit a list. We have five signups. Cheese is not allowed to submit a list. Cheese, well, what, are you, what, are you, what are you playing? Don't do um, it. Don't spoil. No don't spoilers. Do, don't do it. Okay. I'm going to run Popper. Ew. Better not. <laughs> you better not. Hey, go home. Ooh. Oh, that'll be fun because we can sit here and play um, TSUV again. That's... I'm gonna sit. I'm gonna sit here and just hope blindly that I never get paired against Cheese for round one, and then someone runs hyper oppressive control and just kills all his friends. <laughs> okay, so Cheese needs to go run a copy of Go Home Deck. Bugle says Poppy. I actually thought about that. There's a lot of desire to still play Poppy. The Rand Apocalypse. Yeah, yeah the, ran the, the 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 Rand Apocalypse is still good. 
And if you ever need a good laugh, just go read that primer. That was a really good primer. Sure was. Okay, what else are we doing this year? Well, Babs went well. Babs did how about, well. How about Everfree? The how about how about Everfree? The um, what's probably going to be the new big con? April twenty sixth through the twenty eighth. April. Sorry, August. <laughs> it's fun. We're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing a con in two days. Let's go. See y'all there. All right, August twenty sixth through twenty eighth. Now, we weren't 100% sure if Babs was going to be stable enough to run Continentals at. So, unfortunately, or fortunately, Continentals is going to be returning to Everfree. I mean, Everfree had a great play space last year. Sure would have been nice if we could have had it the entire time. Cough, cough. What? Fire alarm? Uh, and getting kicked out early. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. And the room being locked on Friday. Look, the hotel. Excluding <laughs> the hotel, everything went fine. There, there right. were some teething right. issues. Whatever. Right. The con was fine. And seeing that, to the best of our knowledge, everyone was able to attend BabsCon in person and play in person with people who had traveled a great distance and no one ended up getting sick. I think it's safe to say that Everfree, provided it is following decent safety policies, which, as far as I know it is, is also going to be a safe convention to attend this year based on the, uh, you know, future... State of the world social... and so on and yeah. such. Exactly. Anyway, come to Everfree. There, I did anyway, it. Come to Everfree, play cards. Also, Vendor Hall in Seattle, and it's really just a nice area. If you weren't able to make it last year... The con uh, moved from a hotel near the airport to downtown Bellevue. Yes, it's a little bit annoying to get to, but you are within walking distance of, like, multiple shopping malls. There is all the food you could possibly want. And so many There's other... a bar right across the street that serves decent dessert. Random things to do. It's amazing. There's Wagyu. Yes, John Hallies. Let's go. Bring Fluttershy this time. If you want <laughs> to drop lots of money on food, there is Wagyu at John Howie's. John Howie's, for those who have never been there before, is a steakhouse in one of the high-rise skyscrapers. Incidentally, it's in one of the Microsoft buildings. So, lots of executives. It's nice. Is very fun to roll in there wearing the Izzy I am committing tax fraud t shirt. The death glares you get are delicious. Have you, you speak as though you've done this multiple times. I mean, he did it at BabsCon with a different steakhouse. He yes, did. it's true. It was funny. It was funny. Yeah, so come to Everfree, Continentals. Um, con also, start. Start making predictions as for what the promo is going to be. I mean, I already know what the promo is going to be, and well, maybe no, if, you don't. Well, eh, that's true. I don't. I have to run this by you. If you were paying very close attention, you might have seen a copy of it. You haven't seen a copy of the other one though. Shh. And I think we're. I think I misspoke. Uh, there is one Leaders and Legends promo we haven't released yet. And there's about three of them out of fond memories that I haven't released yet, so keep an eye on promos too. Nice. In the meantime, go sign up for Heiko. In the meantime, go sign up for Heiko. Um, do consider coming to Everfree. It's going to be fun. That will about wrap up our discussion on this topic for today. We'd like to give a big shout out to all our patrons on Patreon. Thank you so much for your regular support. If you aren't currently a patron and you enjoy what we do, please consider donating as doing so enables us to continue making content like this and lets you earn some great perks as a bonus. If you have comments or questions you'd like to send our way, feel free to reach out to us through Facebook, Twitter, or email. And if you're a patron, you can also chat live with us on Slack any day, any time. I, we can't even make the sleep schedule quip. I've been trying to actually get to sleep at a reasonable time. I didn't. I intentionally destroyed my Saturday yesterday because I had to get up and work.
Rip. It was fine. I hail hydrated. Finally, if you're looking to watch any of our previous videos, including tournament recordings, you can find them on our YouTube channel linked just below the stream. With all that said, thank you to each and every one of our viewers, both here now and watching this recording later. We are, as always, Commentary is Magic. I am, as always, Grand Claus. Big Cheese. Our cat, and Ivory Starlight. And we'll see you soon. Not and and. Mm, maybe. Maybe. Bye. Bye.